Hi, I'm Raya. And I'm Louis. After traveling around the world full time for years and then road tripping down from the US to Costa Rica in our school bus tiny home, we've parked up on a plot of land we bought in an eco village and are starting the next chapter of our lives. Learning to consciously live in nature, to grow our own food, and what it means to thrive in community. After spending our life savings on buying our land over a year and a half ago, the next big challenge is figuring out what exactly we build on it. Neither one of us has experienced anything like this before. So, although we're both unbelievably excited about our future here, we have been pretty overwhelmed trying to wrap our heads around this process. This has been our journey so far. We've actually made a whole other video on buying this land and about following our dream to live in an eco village in Costa Rica, which we'll link below for you to watch if you haven't already. But just to recap, in February 2020, we visited the Alegria community for the first time after hearing about it at a music festival here in Costa Rica. We found the property together and it's 17 hectares and now there's 45 families from 22 countries. We have 55 children in the school that the parents co-created and it's absolutely thriving. We have arrived at Alegria. We are here in this like crazy eco paradise. Check this out. This is amazing. It's like in its infancy, it like hasn't actually started yet. The plan once this is a thriving community is that there's going to be so much abundance in the food that you're never going to go hungry, that you're constantly going to be able to pick from the fruit orchards, either from your own little plot or all the communal plots. So it's really cool to see this place at the beginning before it's truly flourishing. And whether we buy a place here and buy into this community and be a part of it or whether we just are inspired to kind of do our own thing. Yeah, we're learning a lot. In November 2020, after experiencing one of the strangest years in modern history and witnessing the world trying to adapt to the effects of the pandemic, we made a decision that for the next chapter of our lives, we wanted to be in nature, living in community with clean air, water, and an abundance of food. Alegria was suddenly looking pretty perfect. So after a surprisingly short discussion, we made the decision, took a leap of faith, and bought a lot of land in Alegria. In January 2021, we visited our land for the first time and got to see our future home. This is our lot number, lot number 15. Also, as this was a place we were planning to build our future, I thought it'd be the perfect time to pop the question. We didn't really start any planning during that visit, but with me being pretty technology obsessed, I found an app that can 3D scan land with a drone and I created a 3D model of our lot so we could experiment with ideas to help us figure out where we wanted our house and what it could look like. We love dreaming big and being creative. And before we even start talking to architects and engineers, we want to dream with no limitations, no matter how wild and unrealistic our ideas might be. It's also really important to us that regenerative living and building is a core pillar of Alegria. We see ourselves as stewards of this land rather than owners, and we want to learn how we can build, plant, and live in harmony with our surroundings, both with nature and with the local community. We both love creating dream worlds to live in, and as some of you might know, Louis actually decorated his childhood room in London as a rainforest, complete with a running waterfall, cave bed, and a free roaming iguana. We want to let our imaginations run free here. And growing up, we were both inspired by the Star Wars Ewok Village, the Swiss Family Robinson's Treehouse, Tarzan's Treehouse, the Beach Cabin from Blue Lagoon, just to name a few. And more recently, we both fell in love with the Green School in Bali and Azalik Hotel in Mexico. For the past few years, we've been collecting hundreds of inspiration photos on Pinterest. We love bamboo and wooden structures, organic shapes, unusual and unique designs, sacred geometry, fractals, shapes that mimic nature, spaces that are well lit and make the most of natural sunlight and big open rooms. So with all this, we have an idea of some of the ingredients we want for our dream house. So we are here visiting our land today and the last time we saw it, there were really tall bushes overgrown the whole thing. So we honestly couldn't really get a sense for the shape of it or the size of it. But anyway, we're back now and they've cleared it. So basically anything smaller than like a tree, all the little shrubs and stuff, they've cut down so we can really see the shape of it. And it's 
wild. It's so different than what we thought. Yeah. So when we were here before, we could see the land was sloping down, but now it's cleared. We can see there's like this valley in the middle and there's actually a trickling stream running through it right now. Check it out. I can't believe this is on our land. Yeah, this is the first stage is just trying to figure out where things go. So I think that's, we're gonna talk to architects and stuff and like give, get the best ideas and opinions and then and then we start designing. <laughs> yeah, and I can't wait to share with everyone like the whole process. Obviously we're so new to this. We've never bought property before. We've never done any planning, architecture, nothing. So this is gonna be really like a journey from like no knowledge to full completion. And from nothing. Yeah, and from <laughs> just an empty field. It's, oh it's definitely a bit overwhelming, but I just can't wait. I can like envision us sitting on our balcony a couple of years from now and just looking out and being like, we designed it. Like we dreamed it and now it's real. Mm -hmm. Wow. We are at the top of the land and Raya just spotted some freaking bananas on our land. This is literally my dream. And it's already there, it's growing. These look legit as well. <laughs> they're, they're actually, once they're ripe, that will be edible. Yeah. <sighs> Lots more banana trees being planted. It was incredible to be back in Alegria nine months after our last visit and see how much progress the team had made on the roads and infrastructure. On this visit, we also met with Stephen Brooks, one of the founders of Alegria, and got his opinions on where we could build and plant. So in terms of like what we want, we obviously at some point we'll build the bigger house, I'm guessing like five bedroom, like a big house, right? Like probably the size of yours. Then, Somewhere like, and that, that would go here. Yeah, yeah. and then, then we're thinking a smaller guest house, maybe one or two bedrooms. Two bedrooms, you're thinking? Yeah, two bedrooms. Like a cabin. I would maybe do that up in that corner. So like, there's like a This would be your driveway in yeah. here, and then you could have another like little driveway over there to the guest house. Well, we were thinking maybe the guest house up there, and then we're thinking like a communal space. It's like a big living room, kitchen. You know, like Brad's has that like... Yeah, kitchen, out. living, dining. Yeah. yeah, but a bit more Bigger. enclosed. But just so like, because if we have little like glamping tents or whatever, and bathrooms so that people aren't coming, like our right, home's right. private, yeah, yeah, I get that's it. like... Yeah, main. I get it. I get it. And then also that's next to the to, to the, the road. Main. Yeah, so anyone, so basically yeah. if you're walking past, you can just like pop in there. So and then we'll probably put the put the school bus parked up kind of parallel yeah. to the road up there. Over there. Yeah, maybe where that digger is or a bit further in from there or something, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and then communal space here. I mean, yeah, there's views from every corner. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, look right here, yeah. it's amazing. In January 2022, almost two years after our first visit, we came back again to meet some of our future neighbors for our first ever homeowners association meeting to start making some official decisions together about how the village should be run. So we are in the community building at Alegria. Today is the first ever HOA, homeowners association meeting. It's very formal. There's like, we have to like fill out forms and show our ID. We've got these sticks with our lot numbers on that we're voting. Well, we don't have two different lots. This is our lot. This is Christy and Zia's lot that I'm, we're voting for. Yeah, I'm voting for our friends. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's about to begin. It's exciting. We've got our snacks, guacamole, chips, lots of yummy fruit. Uh, this is a very momentous, pivotal moment. Beginning of the community of Alegria. Although we were there to discuss logistics, it ended up being the most heart-centered time of connection and gave us even more confidence that we had made a great decision in moving to Alegria. We truly got a taste of the future community we will live in. Every single person we met was warm, compassionate, and shared so many values with us. We also saw the almost completed community space and the brand new swimming pool and hot tub. It was so exciting imagining our future and spending time there with all our new friends. How epic is this? Gosh, I can't believe this is last time we were here was September, so like five months ago. And this was, this was just the floor, that was it. Oh, I love this bamboo. This reminds me of the green school. Also, the roads by our land were almost finished and Alegria was really starting to look like a village neighborhood. I guess this is the public road. Well, they've actually widened it to like a road. So when we came in September, we'd had our lot cleared and a lot of grass has grown up since then. Wow, so much has changed. Oh, it's so much more walkable, Raya. 
think this is where there was a little stream last time we were here in the rainy season. But it's definitely dry now. It's, it's wild how different it has been every time that we've seen it. So last time we came, they had just cleared the lot and it was the first time we could actually see the shape of it. This time, there's been grass growing. They've also been like, look at the road behind us. This was so not crazy. done before. So it's just to see the progress, not only around our lot and the road, but the like the communal space. We've just literally were just swimming in the pool and it's just crazy how quickly things are changing and growing. And we've just right. been hanging out with people like showing us 3D renders of their house that is like fully designed. And yeah, it's just, it's unbelievable. So. I, yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> I know. And mm. we are still trying to figure out exactly where we're going to park the bus when we arrive. Yeah. And I think we're definitely going to be the first people to move to Alegria permanently. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have this place to ourselves. Mm -hmm. but that's really exciting because I feel, feel like we'll see it emerging and see all the mm. kind of people arriving slowly and houses popping up. And, and we'll just have the pool to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. <sighs> In March, after quite the adventure driving down from the US, we finally arrived with our bus. Honestly, the first few days were tough, and we were a bit overwhelmed with some of the extreme construction that had started on our land. Second day in the bus. Uh, there's a very loud building work happening. They're digging up massive hole in the road, so we can't actually drive out. Maybe this is what Stephen was saying about, they flattened it. But why? Like, what do they need to do with our lot? I don't understand. Why is our whole lot just level? I guess we can make, like, inquire all of that stuff. But why weren't we told any of this? Yeah. I think we just need to point that out. I don't know who we speak to, but wow, they're actually filling it out as we speak. What the f is happening? Yeah, this is so, kind of weird. I think if it comes down to it and Alegria isn't feeling right, then we could look at renting somewhere here. But I, again, I just feel like that is an expense which would be a lot right now for us. I think if we can get a clear understanding of what construction's happening, what days. Okay. We arrived at a lot today after purchasing the car, spending some time in San Jose, and we just got back. And um, I'm not sure how I feel right now, but this is our lot, which was covered in vegetation. But um, this is currently our lot. And uh, apparently this is part of a water drainage project. Now, I've been told this is going to make it a lot easier for us building and all of the plans we've got. My issue more is there's been a complete lack of communication. I was briefly told that there was some water drainage thing happening, but I had no idea it was this extent. I had no idea it was going to cover this amount of our lot. I mean, this is, this is probably half, like 50% of our lot. And, um, yeah, I'm not arguing that this could make it a lot easier, that it's been flattened. Unfortunately, it has destroyed all life, all of the plants and shrubs and I guess any of the little creatures that were living here, which is a bit strange to me as that's not what we had thought was going to happen. I thought it was going to be more caretaken and, but I guess to rebuild and to plant things and to, uh, construct stuff there needs to be um, some level of kind of taking it down to the bare bones to rebuild but this is pretty wild um Raya's very upset bit of a shock uh, we already had problems kind of coming in this also this all looks like it's been raised a lot like check this this was the initial level down there which is i mean that might be, must be at least two meters maybe three meters down so anyway, that's where we're at. Um, yeah, Raya's so upset, she doesn't want to stay here right now. But I think, um, I think we can figure out something. Um, yeah. 
I'm trying to stay positive. I feel like there, there are kind of hurdles. Obviously, there's a lot of construction and infrastructure still being put into place. So I'm not like angry that this has happened. It's more just would have been cool to be consulted, shown the plans, talked through time, sc time schedules and stuff like that. But I know there's a lot of moving parts and uh, obviously this wasn't um, prioritized to kind of keep keeping us in the loop. And maybe that's partly one of the issues with us arriving here so much earlier than everyone else and being one of the first or the first people to live at Alegria is that it's not actually ready yet. But um, yeah, I didn't, didn't expect this, didn't quite expect this. So um, yeah, I'll figure it out. Then in April, after one of the best weeks of our lives, we came back with our friends and family to give them a taste of Alegria and what our future is gonna look like. We're finally showing people Alegria, our future home. No, actually our current home. <laughs> we literally moved here like a week ago. But, Ooh, that's Louis' dream come true. Isn't this amazing? <laughs> yeah. Hot tub. <laughs> Two kids, yeah, we'll all jump in the pool after lunch. Yeah, so it's interesting to see, like, see this now, and then when you guys come and visit Louis and Raya and their babies, um, you'll see, you, go, you can imagine what it might look like. We did a tour of the communal gardens where Stephen showed us some of the incredible edible plants that Alegria has started growing and painted a beautiful picture of our future. Living in a food forest and having an abundance of fresh fruit and veggies at our fingertips. This is the same one as the green but red. We call it cranberry hibiscus. And again, it's kind of a perennial salad. Wow. So starting from like... I guess it's the other side of this. All of this is our land from here. What do you think of where Raya is going to be living? It's a beautiful land, yes. It was so cool to be able to show everyone our land, to show where we're living, all the amazing fruits and herbs and stuff that Stephen was showing everyone. But yeah, this is where we're going to build our future house. It's going to be incredible. We'll have the guest house, have little retreats, have people come visit and uh, I am just so pumped and so excited we're living here and I think once everything calms down a bit and everyone leaves I'm just gonna like t just take it all in relax and then we're gonna start dreaming of what is the most beautiful imaginative house we can build. We showed the land to our families and asked for ideas and input, especially from Raya's grandpa, who has built his own house in Bulgaria. We spent the next week on the land with our whole family, somehow hosting 10 people camping with no electricity. But surprisingly, we pulled it off. We finished off that week with a beautiful blessing from our family and Raya's grandparents planted a fig tree for us as a symbol of new life at our home. Keep your doors open for uh, a lot of people, never close them. Like hopefully here you will watch many sunsets and sunrises. Hopefully here like no bad people will come through your doors but your doors are always open. Hopefully here you will watch kids and grandkids and great grandkids. And, and then at the end the buddha is like kind of like a hoe like and so it is. Yeah. yeah so we're a lot of in the prayer. Healthy and to be happy and mm. all of those. Basically, like, I hope that you build your dream house and you don't have too many problems because I know there, that there will be some and that your house is always full of laughter and love and people and kids. And, like and, that. and if, you, if you do it, it's going to be the, the best uh, dream come true. Mm -hmm. After leveling the parking spot for our bus, we spent the last few months living on the land. We've been getting a feel for it all getting to know what it's really like to be here during the rainy season and slowly adjusting to life in Costa Rica. This has been much more difficult than we ever expected. And in our next video, we're going to be talking about some of the struggles we found having now lived in Costa Rica for three months. Although this is our dream life that we're building, we want to be real with you along the way, sharing both the highs and the lows. So if you're not already, please subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Over the last three months, we've walked the land many times and tried to measure out areas to get a better idea of the scale and positioning of where we could potentially build our house. Okay, so the sun rises here and actually goes straight over. Oh, really? And it sets there. Oh, okay. So I think we might be all right. And then it might mean the back of our house gets quite a bit of shade. So whatever we're growing here in this section could be more shaded and then over there more 
done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the big shocks for us was this drainage channel, which they've almost finished, which cuts through what we thought was kind of the corner of our, or the edge of our land, but apparently this is, uh, this is outside our lot. And then this is the lot boundary. So we're just adjusting our expectations and making things work. But this basically drains a lot of the, the water that could be flooding in high rainy season off our land and kind of diverts it, which is a good thing. Maybe this is where it's like a magical avatar garden where you, where you walk through like a magical yeah. entrance with like a rounded Ooh, gate yeah, thing. Yeah, have a really cool yeah. archway. Yeah, like with Jurassic like... Uh, I was imagining more of like a fairy rose garden situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something between the two. Okay, we are sitting down. I've printed out some isometric diagrams of our land with our boundary and then like our boundary for where we can build. And it's kind of faint so we can draw over it, but you can see the scale of our bus. And, and us. And us. <laughs> and then yeah. that's the big tree in the, on the edge of our land. Mm -hmm. And I've started sketching some ideas of where we can build. Mm -hmm. We haven't really figured out like what our house is going to look like yet, but I'm kind of just being creative and I want it to be like lots of curves and yeah. So I've got two ideas that I've started drawing. I think right now it's more about location than what the house is going to look like. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out where everything goes and because especially like we're gonna have to build in stages we definitely don't have the money to just build everything at once and the first thing we need to figure out is where's the bus gonna go but mm. then we need to figure out where the house is gonna go so we, we know where the bus is gonna go and everything needs to if we just have like a general idea of where everything is then we can start working on okay what can we afford and what do we want like this month this year next year you know build it in stages but this is what i'm thinking at the moment after yeah. chatting to steven whatever our house ends up looking at i think this is the area Mm -hmm. set back here but it could be quite it could be right up to the boundary of this because mm -hmm. i don't think this is going to be tons of traffic yeah. and it maximizes this space this side i think having some kind of big house there maybe with a pool or something either there or mm -hmm. maybe i guess we want the view so either yeah. there or in front here and then behind here what i'm thinking at the moment is this is where we could grow everything this could basically be our mm. vegetable gardens and fruit trees mm -hmm. because then this leads this to be more open. Yeah. So the, the one thing in. is that I was potentially thinking the house could be more like this kind of shape. Yeah, I like that. Um, to, to face out that way. Yeah, because the view isn't just that way. It's that way too. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so then this way you're like opening mm, up. I like both. that, yeah ways so it's kind of, I mean it's basically yours but I guess like with an extension a, a bit out this way yeah so it just kind of curves around like that yeah yeah I like that I was kind of envisioning like the upstairs of the house like this kind of corner is almost like our wing mm -hmm. so this is like our master bedroom and everything okay because then we have we have like the view of everything and the furthest from the road and then I'm thinking, potentially the bus could be that top, that mm -hmm. corner there with a little roof that comes over with the little tables and chairs and maybe there could be decking here. So we both like the house generally in this area, whether it's, yeah. I, I, I think I prefer a little bit more of a U shape than. Yeah, and I'm, I feel like, I know what Steven's saying, we don't want to be too close to this road, but the more we, move it this way the more we're losing yeah, our area lose so i i know what he's saying but i also think whether we're like two further mm -hmm. two meters further it's not gonna make any difference mm -hmm. we're just trying to figure out where we want to place things that's kind of where we're at right now so what we're trying to think and we'll include some like overview shots and stuff but what we're thinking is over here this is the tallest part of our lot so it has the best view and we'll show you some of the surrounding view in a second we're thinking this will be our main house, which will be maybe a four bedroom house. Eventually there'll be a pool in the front. That's kind of the long-term vision is like a big main house, maybe kind of curved. So it's just looking out onto our lot and the beautiful view. So that's here with the pool in front. That's kind of like shared between the other different structures. And then come this way. 
By the way, if you didn't see the last video, we adopted this yeah. little puppy, Kelly. Kelly! <laughs> She's coming on a tour of the land with us. So over here, this little patch of green, we're thinking this will be the guest house. So this will probably be the first house that we build because it'll be smaller, it'll be cheaper, and it kind of just makes sense to start, like we could live in the guest house for years while we're saving up and building our main house. It's gonna go there. Right over here, which again, will still have a beautiful view. And since it's rainy season, we've just discovered that there's a little creek running through our land. If you look down, it's like bubbling up from the ground in a few different places. So we're just trying to think. <laughs> Excuse me. So basically we're trying to figure out how can we incorporate this into the design. So maybe we can create like a little creek riverbed that runs across. Maybe there's a little bridge to get to the guest house. And during the summer when there isn't water bubbling up from the ground, maybe we'll just do a pump to like bring the water around. I thought that'd be really fun. So just to give you another view, this is where we're picturing the main house behind me. Probably where I'm standing will be the pool so it can be shared with the guest house and other structures in the property. And then over here is our beautiful tree. This huge, amazing tree that Louis was hoping we could build a tree house in. It's kind of on the edge of our lot, so we'll, we're not too sure if we can do that. I feel like he's gonna try I'm, anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna try, <laughs> just because it overhangs, so maybe we can yeah. put a little platform yeah. up there. It's so beautiful, and then do you wanna tell them about the rest of the structures? Yeah. So, one of the big things I need is a workshop slash man cave for building things and for like editing, doing stuff on my computer late at night, maybe making music. I want to start getting into more music production, DJing, stuff like that. So, this bottom corner of the land. This has got the worst view, but I'm not really needing any views for the workshop, so I think a little two-story man cave at the bottom would be amazing with like access to drive cars in to the workshop. Currently where the bus is parked, it's not technically on our land, it's like on the edge and it's on the main road and that's not its long-term home. So at the moment, we haven't fully figured this out, but at the moment we're thinking, having the bus parked along here, either above that rock, I'm not quite sure where we're gonna do it yet, probably across some of that road there. That's not really a road, it's just a temporary track. And then probably along the edge of our lot here would have like a communal bathroom, shower and laundry room, which will eventually be available for like little guest tents we're gonna have as well, like little guest houses. Glamping tents. Glamping tents yeah. when we have little retreats here, which hopefully we can invite some of you guys to. And that's pretty much it. And then we'll obviously be growing amazing food and fruit and vegetables. And this will be the garden area where we'll do that. As the land starts taking shape, one of the things that we're most excited about is hosting retreats and inviting some of you to visit. If you want to be one of the first to hear about our upcoming retreats in Costa Rica, sign up for our new mailing list linked below. Lastly, if you're an architect and want to help with our project or have any cool ideas, please reach out. I've also included a link to some of the plans of our land in the description if anyone has some creative layout ideas and wants to sketch them. We're so excited to continue this design process over the coming months and years to get started with building our dream house and, of course, to take you along on the adventure. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.